Live from downtown Detroit, home of WDIV and Click on Detroit, Local 4 News at 6 starts now. Professors on the picket line. We're live from Oakland University, where day one of classes featured faculty members on strike. The owner of a beloved Detroit restaurant is furious over a fence he believes someone built through the middle of his parking lot out of spite. But well, we begin with breaking news from Flat Rock, where an emergency is declared after what officials are calling a hazardous materials spill. At Thompson News tonight at 6, we're getting new information on what may be causing an unusual gas-like odor in Flat Rock. Let's get right out to Sean Lay with the latest. And Sean, it's been a long day of investigation there for environmental experts. Absolutely, and we were with them every step of the way here. We've now moved into the neighborhood where earlier at 5 o'clock we had met with two homeowners forced from their homes because of this mystery odor. That is now up to four homeowners. Wayne County just calling a state of emergency here and calling on the state to call a state of emergency. That does not mean they're calling for evacuations. It means it will speed up the process of cleaning up what is now being identified as a spill in the sewer system, a spill and an odor that the mayor describes this way. And I can only tell you personally what it smells like to me. It kind of smells like a sweet gasoline or a fruity smelling gasoline. That's the mayor of Flat Rock, Mark Hammond, describing fumes that have forced two homeowners out of their homes in the Hickory Ridge subdivision. The same fumes detected at a Flat Rock sanitary sewer pump station. So far, no calls for evacuations. No one has gotten sick, but we don't know what the stuff is. We don't know where it is. As far as the source, we know where it is contained and it is contained to that southeastern corner of the city. Federal, state and local officials, they're going sewer lid by sewer lid, taking readings and finding the fumes, but have yet to identify exactly what it is. Well, this has really turned into a large scale investigation. We're asking the citizens to report in if there's any illness. We want them to leave their home immediately, go to fresh air and call 911. Back here live. Important to remember the spill and the source not been identified yet. The fumes not been identified yet at all. We were over at the staging area behind City Hall in Flat Rock. Didn't smell a thing. Came back to the neighborhood again today. You can kind of smell some hints of what the mayor is talking about here. But a state of emergency called by Wayne County. No one has gotten sick yet. It's not impacting the drinking water according to Wayne County. But Wayne County also asking the state to call a state of emergency to speed up the process. Identify it and get rid of it. Back to you. Yeah, hopefully they get that sorted out, get some answers quick. All right, Sean, thanks. It's an absurd sight, a parking lot where half the spaces are blocked by a chain link fence. And it was a big surprise to employees of Green Dot Stables when they arrived for work earlier this week. The restaurant happens to be near the Ambassador Bridge and surrounded by property owned by the Detroit International Bridge Company. Our Grant Herms is there live and Grant, this battle has already gone to court. It's already been in court and that fence has actually already come down. It happened with just the last couple hours. So you can see the remnants of it still the posts where that fence was. They cut that away just a little bit ago. But when this fence was up and those employees got to work, it was all along here. A manager's car had been blocked in here. Their dumpsters had been cut off from them. And that storage container back there was where they kept all of their dry ingredients that they need every day. They say this is an escalation of a weeks long back and forth over such a small part of land. It's crazy. I, it, it was a uh, I woke up to the picture from one of our managers and I was like, are you kidding me? Green Dot Stables owner Jacques Driscoll said he couldn't believe what he was seeing, looking at a picture of the parking lot that had been used by his restaurant for 50 years, fenced off. They came in the middle of the night, put that fence up and, uh, you know, I thought we were still trying to talk with them about, you know, working out some sort of deal to where this wouldn't happen, but they told me to stop talking to them. The they he's talking about is Detroit International Bridge Company owned by the Maroon family, the same family who owns the Ambassador Bridge known for controversial business practices. They claim they have the deed for and a survey of the strip of alleyway near the iconic Detroit restaurant. They wanted to charge Green Dot 1000 bucks a month just to keep using it and taking care of it. I said we've been paving and maintaining it. They've even cleaned all the garbage that blows, you know, on their fence line all the time. For years, we cleaned up their blight. Then last week, the restaurant filed in court to stop a fence from going up. It wasn't granted until Wednesday. Today, the fence came down. I'm not happy about it. I'm just, it's, I'm kind of bewildered by the whole thing. It's just, you know, it's, it's a silly thing and they don't want to really talk about it. They, 
you know, they said they said they want to be reasonable, but I don't think putting a fence up and blocking all our stuff in is a reasonable gesture. A gesture that's likely just the start of what could be a costly David and Goliath legal fight. I spoke with a manager here today who basically was saying that this was a small win for Green Dot Stables here. They say this fence is down for now. They just don't know how long that'll be given what might happen in court. Back to you. Grant, what is the bridge company saying about all this? Well, we reached out to them today, but did not get a comment back. Their spokesperson did give a comment to Deadline Detroit, and they said they're disappointed in Green Dot. They said that what they're actually worried about is liability and what they consider their side of the fence here should someone get hurt. But there was no doubt all of that will get worked out in court. Mm -hmm. Already been to court. We can only imagine it's going back. All right, Grant. Thanks. Yeah. Washtenaw and Ingham counties are joining others around the state and issuing masks for students and staff. The new requirement will be in effect starting next week for all K through 12 schools. In Washtenaw, officials say uh, the emergency order will remain active until COVID transmission within the county decreases to a moderate level or lower. All right, if you thought it was nice yesterday, boy, the, the beauty <laughs> index went up a few notches today. That's right, a two-peat here. Uh, <laughs> we'll have more uh, on that uh, in just a few moments. But first, here's Andrew with a look at our weather. Hi, Andrew. Well, Kimberly and Jason, good evening to you. Batting 1,000 so far for September, two days in a row of nearly perfect conditions. Blue skies overhead, warm to mild conditions right now, 79 to near 80 degrees at City Airport. Mild conditions, but still looking lovely in Port Huron with 70 degrees, 73 over in Lapeer, 75 in Sanilac County. Always got you covered up north. We're looking at mostly sunny skies at the airport, a nice breeze out of the north, keeping us dry, keeping us comfortable through the rest of this evening. It does get cooler, of course. Temperatures will be in the middle and low 60s by the time we get around the 10 p.m. and midnight tonight. And afterward, we're looking at temperatures going even lower. Might need to grab an extra blanket before going to bed. We can sleep safely with windows up, though, air out our homes a little bit more with overnight lows that are in the 50s. But some areas in the chillier 40s down to around 46 in Port Huron by tomorrow morning. Do skies remain clear for tomorrow? What about your holiday weekend? That and your seven day forecast in minutes. A Michigan teacher faces multiple sex charges in connection to an incident that happened last month. Stephen Rogers from Marysville High faces five charges, including two counts of first degree criminal sexual conduct and distributing obscene matter to children. The school superintendent says he's been placed on administrative leave while police investigate. Rogers pleaded not guilty in court on Wednesday. Two of the big three are planning massive plant shutdowns because of the ongoing chip shortage. GM announced today it's halting production at nearly all its North American assembly plants. The pause will run for two weeks starting Monday, which is Labor Day. Meanwhile, Ford will stop making pickups at its Kansas City assembly plant for the next two weeks. The reason for all of this, the continued shortage of semiconductor chips that are a key component in vehicles. The remnants of Hurricane Ida are now proving to be devastating throughout the Northeast as the death toll is climbing there. At least 29 people were killed by the storm across four states after it moved north from Louisiana. More than 150,000 homes are without power. States of emergency remain in effect for New York, New Jersey and Pennsylvania. President Biden set to tour Louisiana tomorrow to access the damage as thousands are still without power. His message today, help is on the way for people in the regions affected. We need to get power restored. We need to get more food, fuel, and water deployed. I get hourly updates on the progress from FEMA well into the night. And we'll be working around the clock until the critical needs of the region are fully met. More on the aftermath of Ida and the top national headlines coming up at 6.30 on NBC Nightly News with Lester Holt. Oakland University's first day of fall semester classes got off to a rocky start. A picket line formed at the university gates in Auburn Hills this morning, and it remains there tonight. Local 4 Business Editor Rod Maloney is live with a look at how things are going with a contract dispute between the professors and the school. Rod? Yeah, Kimberly, just got off the phone with the union president. She tells me that they're still talking. Now, those talks resume this morning at 10 a.m. after going until about 1230 last night. Still no deal. The deal here now is figuring out how to get a package that includes pay and benefits the professors can cope with. 
This is an unusual sight in Michigan anymore because there's a state law preventing teachers from striking. Yet here they defiantly picket, though not blocking traffic into the school entrance. The professors in school put off contract talks for a year because of COVID last year, returned to the table in May, but couldn't get to an agreement before the contract expired and classes started today. American Association of University Professionals, President Karen Miller, says the university is backsliding on pay and benefits. I believe their original package was that they wanted to offer us a 1% raise and that they wanted to significantly reduce the size of their contribution to our health benefits. They wanted to cut back our retirement benefits. The university is not commenting on its package, wanting to negotiate behind closed doors or closed Zoom session, as is the case here. Students understand they were crossing a picket line to come to classes, the few that were available. Did you have any classes today? No, I did not. Are you happy about that? Uh, not really. I have one that's a Zoom class instead of in person, but um, all of mine have been canceled except for that one. No. Are you upset about that? Uh, not really, yeah. but I would I would have rather gone in and gotten to know what I was supposed to do. Yeah. Well, the university is telling us tonight that if this drags on much longer, they're just going to go to court because they believe they can get an injunction from the judge to send the teachers back into the classroom. But as things stand right now, they're still counting on that state mediator to be able to get a deal and get it perhaps as early as tonight. Back to you. Rod, looks like you talked to quite a few students. Are, are they telling you what they're hearing about when all of this mm -hmm. could possibly end? Yeah, they told us that, you know, that some of the students that have actually conversed with professors today think that they can have this thing wrapped up probably by Tuesday of next week to get mm. past the Labor Day holiday. All right. Yeah. Okay. Keep us posted, Rod. Thanks. Well, that just gives students more time for strike parties <laughs> or whatever they're going to do. Still ahead here at 6, a scan the Oakland County Sheriff wants everyone to know about involving his office. Plus, Mar McDonald is on the move in Taylor. Mara. Kimberly, Jason, you're right. We're on the parade route. We have a parade ongoing all to celebrate Taylor's Little League World Championship team. Best part of it is all the kids in Taylor who play Little League are marching tonight. We'll see you here in just a few.